but I refused the operation and uh, the two years elapsed with no problems at all. As a matter of fact, what the two years did was to verify to me that the arthritis I had in the back of my neck, in this shoulder, the fingers of this hand had absolutely disappeared in a matter of weeks because I was on the diet. We called it macrobiotic. Hey everybody, so today I'm interviewing someone who is really, really special, really remarkable human. His name is Mike Fremont. In 1991, at 69 years old, Mike was diagnosed with colorectal cancer. His doctors at the Cleveland Clinic told him he would die in three months unless he had an operation to remove the tumor. He declined the operation. He adopted a whole food plant-based diet. Two years later, he did have surgery and there was no metastasis, which is amazing. Now, not only that, but he's a lifelong athlete. He has the fastest marathon time for an 88-year-old, a 90-year-old, and a 91-year-old. At 96 years old, he set the American one-mile record for the 95 to 99-year-old age group. And as a lifelong canoe racer, at 99, he was the oldest person to race the canoe national championships. He's still out there running and staying active. So, Mike, it's great to great to connect with you. Great to have you on. How are you? I'm fine. I may have trouble expressing this, but uh, the Cleveland Clinic put a television receiver inside of me so I could see this and I could see that when they were making the diagnosis. And they said it has metastasized. And I didn't really connect what happened after that. But I refused the operation. And uh, the two years elapsed with no problems at all. As a matter of fact, what the two years did was to verify to me that the arthritis I had in the back of my neck, in this shoulder, the fingers of this hand had absolutely disappeared in a matter of weeks after the diagnosis because I was on the diet. The diet did that. And what was the diet? What did you eat? Vegan diet. We called it at the time macrobiotic. Yes. The book I read was on macrobiotics by Michio Kushi, a Japanese-American. And I got to know him and went to his school, which was like a monastery in the mountains, a fun place, and learned to eat that way. But the important thing was, I read a few months ago that 90% of the people who have the metastasis and the basic tumor as well, 90% of them die of the metastasis, not the basic tumor. So that what I had actually done was kill the metastasis by diet. So there was no real further threat after he took out the tumor, which was bleeding, giving me a little trouble. And he said, I looked in 35 places for metastasis, and he said there was zero. Do you remember how many places they found metastasis initially? Uh, no, the, the, the clinic, I didn't talk to the clinic after that. What about on the first but, diagnosis? Did they tell you where it had metastasized to? Was it in other organs? Yeah, yeah, it was in the uh, lymph nodes. So you, you were diagnosed, it metastasized to your lymph nodes, you adopted a whole food plant-based diet, you followed a macrobiotic diet, that's Michio Kuchi of the Kuchi Institute, and uh, his son Lawrence is, is, works for the NIH doing uh, cancer 
uh, epidemiology research, actually. I, I might interview him soon. Um, he and I spoke together uh, in a conference on a on the vegan cruise this year. But anyway, and then two years later, you had a little trouble with the tumor and some bleeding, and they took the tumor out. And And now it has been how many years since the tumor was removed? 30... Uh, about 30 years almost i don't have the exact dates. <laughs> that's okay we don't have to be that precise over 30 years <laughs> is incredible and uh how were you an athlete at the time you were diagnosed or did you pick up athletics and, and competing after cancer well I'm, I'm very small i'm five feet three i think i used to be five feet six <laughs> Once upon a time, I weigh 120 pounds. And in college, I wrestled at 121 and 128. I enjoyed that. But then uh, I took up running. My first wife died. And I took up running. And I found out I was small and lightweight, and there was no hindrance to running. And uh, I didn't come in last. So then I had to do the Boston Marathon, and I did that respectably. <laughs> so I went to 16 Bostons. Wow. And the canoe racing, I picked a good partner. A guy called me and said, you want to get in a canoe race? I said, well, if you can do it, I can do it. So I was 40 at the time, and I chose my own partner, he was a war veteran and spent a year after the war with a canoe on top of his car, driving across the country to the ideal places to canoe. So he and I won the first race we were in, big time, which spoiled us. It ruined us. <laughs> we thought we were good. <laughs> How do you feel today, being 100 years old? That's a huge milestone. You've been on a plant-based diet for... 30 year over 30 years yeah you're an over 30 year cancer survivor how do you feel i feel fine the important thing is this metastasis business if you understand that you've got a different picture from the usual approach to that what is the secret to long life mike fremont you're 101 years old the first thing is absence of stress for example, if you're out of a job and you need the money, that's stress. Or if terrible things happen in your life, it can be stress. But certainly you've had bad things happen in your life as long as you've lived. You lost your first wife. I mean, I'm, certainly you've had bad things happen. How do you handle stress? I really believe that these are the best days of my life. Have you always thought that at every stage of life? The question never came up. I was just here doing what I had to do. How important do you think uh, the plant-based diet is and exercise? That is, uh, I believe, responsible for my having killed the metastases. I can't know, and of course doctors would never necessarily agree to that, but it has given me a longer life than... Almost all my classmates. Do you have any other friends who are over 100? No. I had a cousin who went to 104, and we just lost her. I lost my first wife to a brain hemorrhage, and my second wife and I divorced. My third wife and I divorced. And my fourth wife I've been married to for 30 years. <laughs> so this was that was a major life changing season for you. Cancer diagnosis, you changed your diet, and you got remarried, all in a very short span of time. I'm telling you the truth, and it's not necessarily too favorable to religions. And well, I think there are a lot of people who aspire to make it to 100. I, I'm one of them. I'm 46 years old. And I do aspire to to make it to 100. What advice do you have for people out there that want to live a long, healthy life? Well, I've got a very good friend named Harvey Lewis. And uh, if you follow the running circuit 
or even if you don't, Harvey Lewis is internationally known. He uh, ran the 2,190-mile Appalachian Trail. It's only in the mountains from Maine to Georgia. I don't know whether he's number one in the nation or number two. And he teaches school in Cincinnati, and he had me in to talk to the kids a couple of times. Uh, but life, life has been so absolutely blessed to me. All, all these favors that uh, I just don't have, I'm not stressed. Were you stressed before you got cancer? Were you, did you live a more stressful life as a younger man? I was worried because I was too little. I couldn't get on teams and I read a lot of stuff. And I've learned a lot of lessons, you might say. Having had my own business for 40 years, having raised canoes for 60-plus years, 62 years, having run marathons for 62 years, you, know, you pretty, pretty well have a grip. You're not going to make any serious mistakes. It costs you your freedom or severe stress. And the people I associate with have been nice to me. I've been on the podcasts. I think, I think people who have sought me out because of what I am, not what I used to be or what I should be. <laughs> there have been nine occasions in this year that I've had to travel or something to talk to somebody. And then, you know, uh, Rich Roll, you, you've seen his stuff. He had me on uh, at the opposite end of a table for two hours. I didn't know Rich Roll, but I had some German limericks that were not very clean that I saved for t talking to men. <laughs> Are you sure those on the Rich Roll show? <laughs> my wife came with, with me and asked her sister to come down from San Bernardino, which is near where I went. So I had two women there, and I couldn't tell these limericks for oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better not tell them here either. We have, uh, we have women li listen to our show, more, more women than men, I, I think. What is your daily routine? Well, it depends on the season. I was doing 10 miles three times a week, running through a park. And in canoe season, I would still do that 10 miles three times a week. But another three times a week, I would practice canoeing. So you would run one day and canoe the next day? Yeah. So you're exercising six days a week? I was, yeah. It's a little bit down because of these accidents I, I had, but it's fun. I like to do it. My wife got inspired, and the two of us ran a half marathon in Daytona Beach. This year? No, that was uh, last year or two years ago. I'm not sure what. But she and I run together mostly now, and she's faster than I am. So she runs ahead, and then comes back and takes my hand. <laughs> Do you have any uh, any marathon plans? I ran my last marathon when I was 90 because I set a world record. It's a world single-age record is what they call it. And I did that at the age of 90. I said, I don't have anything more to prove. <laughs> <laughs> so I th thought, well, I might do half marathons. So I did half marathons for a while. And I set uh, two world records for that, for the age, single age of 90 and 91. And then I set a, an American record for the age of 96 in the one mile. How fast was your mile? 14 minutes or something like that. I could send it to you. Okay. <laughs> we'll put it in your list of accomplishments. They made a big fuss over me. 
because I was uh, so old. And they had uh, special shirts, T-shirts made for three young women who were runners so that they could run ahead of me in Des Moines because that's where this one mile race was. And they had a photographer who was built like a, a small football player who had to run backwards faster than I did while taking my picture. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was just ludicrous. <laughs> I was laughing all the way. <laughs> and they gave me a flag and uh, people on the street recognized me. <laughs> and a woman helped me with my bag, getting it into the airplane and during the morning. She said, I saw you. <laughs> That's what happens when you're a celebrity. Everybody wants yeah. to help you. <laughs> yeah, I became, I became a celebrity. I wanted to help you in any way I could because I certainly identify with your your issue. Thank you. Well, I, I'm excited to share your story, to introduce you to my audience. I think you're so inspiring. And like I said, I, I you inspire me. I I hope to be fit and active, healthy and strong, and have all my wits about me and be fully uh, independent, uh, as you are and, uh, and make it to a hundred or maybe more. And, um, I just think it's, it's just awesome. I love your story. I love your attitude, your enthusiasm. You obviously have a great sense of humor and uh, are enjoying life. And, uh, I think you just inspire a lot of people. Um, and that's, it's amazing. Really cool. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Well, I, I don't want to take up any more of your time. Thank you again, uh, Mike. You're, you, you're incredible. You're an incredible human. You deserve to be honored and celebrated. And uh, folks, is this, not, is this not so cool? Is it not so cool to see someone who's fit and thriving and at 100 years, 101 years old? Tell me where you live. I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. There's some really challenging runs in Tennessee. Very, some of the most challenging in the country. Uh, Harvey Lewis does them. Right. Appalachian Trail and the Smoky Mountains. Tennessee's got some, West Tennessee is pretty flat where I am, but uh, East Tennessee, even Middle Tennessee, but especially East Tennessee is mountainous. So yeah, there's some, there's some very difficult terrain uh, to mm -hmm. run or traverse, hike, and uh, it's beautiful. Memphis is not, not as nice. It's just flat with a lot of trees. And it's very humid, <laughs> but I have family here, so I'm, I'm stuck. I can't leave. Okay, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope you've been inspired by this interview with Mike Fremont. He's just an incredible human, as you can tell, uh, 30 plus year cancer survivor, 30 year whole food, plant-based diet eater, vegan diet eater. And as you can tell, don't believe the myths. You can thrive on a plant-based diet. Uh, and, uh, and wor multiple world record holder for marathons as a senior citizen for one mile, the one mile run, uh, uh, as a senior, just, just, I am so awe inspired by Mike Fremont. So anyway, please share this interview, help, help me reach more people, help us reach more people with Mike's story. And, uh, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you on the next interview.